Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training YouTube channel here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining in and watching the rants that I do and some of the tutorials that I put out for the dog training community. I truly do appreciate it. Today, I have my new six month old Belgian Malinois named Hawk or Hawken. And I'm gonna show you guys how to introduce or how I would introduce the competitive heel. And so this is gonna be a series working with Hawk and we're gonna do all sorts of different stuff. So as always, make sure you leave a comment below asking any questions you guys may have concerning your dog or dog training and I'll be sure to answer it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Hawk on my left side. That's how I always heal my dogs. And as I walk, I want him competitively putting his head up, looking right at me. And so I'm using food to start the muscle memory process of doing so. So I'm just gonna lure him forward, reward that, good heel. Good heel, Hawk. Good heel, good. Now I'm gonna start putting his head forward, yes. So see how his positioning of his head is straight up? Yes, good boy. I'm gonna start marking and rewarding that. Good boy. Good heel. Good. Sit. Yes. Okay, break. And I'm giving him a break. So what I want you guys to do is put your dog on the left side. You're gonna start with your heel command. And I wanna show you how I'm holding your food here. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding the food right here in my thumb or between my, I guess, my thumb and my, my hand. And as I lure him forward, he's licking that food like that, actually from my hand. So this is something I call power steering or what other people would call power steering in the competitive world. In no way, shape or form am I a competitor in any obedience platform. However, I find there's not a lot of videos to teach you how to do a competitive heel. So I'm gonna do it with him anyway. And I might as well film it. So that's what I'm doing. So again, I'm gonna get the head positioning right where I want it. Nice and high. Heel. Good. Nice and slow. So I'm not gonna move fast with him at all. Good heel. Good. Good heel. Good. And I'm marking and, and, and reinforcing. Good heel. Yes. Good. Okay, break. Good. And so when I'm giving him a break, it's not only for his mental stability to have a break, but it's also for his muscles. So um, putting his neck up is definitely not discomforting, but it is hard for him to do at this moment because it's something he's never done before. So this is about the second time I've ever done this with him. And I gotta be honest, he's doing really, really great, probably because of the genetics that he has. Um, so I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna wrap him around me or lure him into place. Okay, and then heal. And this is what I'm gonna be doing. Good heel, Hawk. Good heel. Good heel. Yes, good boy. Good, so nice and slow. That's very important when you're doing this first step. Sit, yes. Break, good, good. So I'm doing an automatic sit, which basically means when I stop, I'm also luring him into a sit just like this because it's something I, want, I want, want him to do in the future. So, like that, yes, good. And then break, I'm giving him a break. Good job, buddy. So the important thing when you're doing this introduction is I want you to find from A to B for you guys. So you're gonna get your dog out. They're gonna be interested in the food. Their, their head may not be able to go as, as much up as he can. Um, so what you wanna do to help really capture what you want with the dog is do it in small increments. So you're gonna put his head up, yes, good. One, two, three, four, break, good boy. You're gonna come back, you're gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, four, yes, break, good. In small increments, and then what you guys can do is as you start building that muscle memory or that behavior in the dog, you can then go a little bit further away. Heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, break, good. And then he gets the full piece of food after that, or you can save it, bring it back. Good. I'm gonna do that again. Head up, hawk heel. One, 
two, three, four, good, five, good, six, seven, yes, good, yes, break, good boy. So incrementally, what you'll do is you'll build the duration and the distance in the dog. Um, at no point should you be able to go from healing for three steps into 20. It's not realistic, it's not fair, it's not gonna happen. So you're gonna keep doing that for an extended amount of time until your dog is quality over quantity, which means if you can get from A to B solidly with a perfect good heel, two, three, good heel, four, five, good heel, six, seven, eight, yes, break. So that was good. The head positioning was perfect. He wasn't unmotivated and discouraged to, to not work because he was uncomfortable and he didn't want to work for that much longer. So then I would go nine steps, then I would go 10 steps, 11 steps, etc. Now, the second part to this is then entering a turn, which I'm gonna show you how I do. The first time I'm gonna do it is gonna be one turn. So we're gonna go back to square one with where we started. Hawk heel, one, two, three, four, five, turn. Yes, break, good. So he successfully went into the turn with the proper head position. And that was really important because that was the first time he's done that, or it's gonna be the first time for you guys anyway. So when you come out, you're gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, into the turn. Yes, good, good. Now, the second part of that will be very simple. You're gonna add in another turn after the first turn. So it's two turns, essentially. Heel, one, two, three, four, five. Into the turn, yes, good heel. Reinforcing, good heel, good. I'm gonna go into another turn here. Good heel, yes, good heel, good. And then even if you wanted to get fancy and go into a third turn, yes, good boy. So, okay, break. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but as soon as he goes from head positioned here, and he gets sloppy and starts doing like this, and then I end it. So you wanna produce very quality heel in durations to make it really great over time. Good heel, perfect, two, three. Good heel hawk into the turn, nice and easy, nice and slow. Yes, break. And what we're doing is we're painting a picture, much like dance class. You're gonna warn one dance move to the next dance move, and ultimately this will become a routine. I'm gonna do this one more time for you guys, and this is gonna be the introduction to a competitive heel in a very easy format. Heel, verbally mark, tell the dog what position. Reward, good heel. Nice and slow into your first turn, good heel. Good heel. Yes, good heel, Hawk. Yes, good heel. Second turn, reinforcing the heel. Good heel, good heel, good, good, good heel. So he's doing really good. I could probably get five or six reps. Good, so see how right there he got sloppy? I want his head to be right there. Yes, sit, yes, okay, break, good. So as soon as your dog starts deteriorating into that heel, that's when you end it right there. Don't push it past what they can do in their thresholds. One thing that we're gonna talk about in episode number two is as I'm turning with him, I wanna show you something. I want you to pay attention to his back legs. So this is something I'm gonna start in talking about, which is, yes, rear end awareness. I've only had this dog for about a week now, and so we're still trying to get used to each other and know each other. I'm gonna work on this muscle memory right here without moving the position. Good boy, yeah, good, good. So I want you guys to watch his back end when I make a turn, good. Good heel, good heel, good, good, good heel. So he's starting to get brick, he's starting to get pretty sloppy with that, so we're gonna end it right there for that, but his back end is very robotic, like this. And, and that's okay because most dogs are like that. The reason behind that is, guys, is very simple. A lot of dogs can't access their back end because they aren't taught how to. So one of my trainers here said it really nicely. It's basically the difference in a snowstorm realizing that you have four wheel drive versus not. Huge difference in the dog's mobility in their back end. So as we continue with the competitive stuff, 
on the next episode, I'm gonna simply introduce how to introduce, how to use that rear end awareness and how to utilize it in competitive healing. So that's gonna be episode number two, it's gonna be coming up. So for right now, you guys should be going home, working on your A to B, super clean break, super clean break, super clean break, exactly on what you want. Introduce the turn, good, second turn, good, third turn, eh. okay, go back to one, two, one, two, third, you've completed, so on and so forth, etc. cetera. And um, so that's gonna, this is gonna be it for, good boy, episode number one. Again, this is Hawk, he's a six month old Belgian Malinois. Um, we're gonna be uh, finding him a new home after our, our training because he's not gonna work out for the police program that we have here at the Upstate Canine Academy. Um, but again, thank you guys so very much for joining me on the coolest dog training YouTube channel here on YouTube. Thank you again, guys. Don't forget, leave a comment below. Let me know, 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 know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.